What's so good about a market at competitive equilibrium? Economists say over and over it's efficient. More precisely, that it's Pareto efficient or Pareto optimal, which has a rather mystifying definition, which we'll explain in a bit. A situation is efficient if no change is possible that will help some people without harming others. One way to see what efficiency means is to look at economic surplus. That is, the total benefit that producers and consumers get from a market in equilibrium. Producers who bring to market, say, MP3 players at a cost below the equilibrium price get a kind of bonus when they sell their product. The lowest cost producer gets the difference between the equilibrium price and his or her marginal cost of production, as shown on the supply curve. And there's a bonus for every supplier who can make MP3 players for less than the price at equilibrium. Add up the bonuses of all these suppliers, and you've got a triangle known as producer surplus. But consumers get a bonus, too. That is, the difference between the maximum price they would be willing to pay, as shown on the demand curve, and the equilibrium price, which is all they actually do pay. The cash they keep, instead of having to spend, is their bonus. Proceeding down the demand curve, consumers are willing to pay less and less, so the consumer bonus or surplus diminishes. But add up all the bonuses and you get another triangle, consumer surplus. Put the consumer surplus together with the producer surplus, and the result is total economic surplus. In textbook economics, this picture means that at equilibrium, the economy is producing the most welfare or happiness it can for MP3 consumers and producers. And you can see this vividly if, say, the government were to move the price away from equilibrium. Consumers who can't or won't pay the new higher price are harmed because they're now MP3-less. And since there's now only this much demand, a whole bunch of producers are harmed, too, since they'll stop making money selling MP3 players. We repeat the definition of efficiency, or Pareto optimality. A situation is efficient if no change is possible that will help some people without harming others. The new government set price violates that definition. It's inefficient because it harms some people, makes them worse off. Only equilibrium is efficient, Pareto optimal. So in economics, equilibrium arrived at through competition would seem to be the best of all possible worlds because it's efficient, Pareto optimal. But, and this is a key but, in textbook economics, efficiency has nothing to do with justice. Just because a market at equilibrium is efficient, produces the maximum economic surplus, doesn't mean it's fair. It may deliver the most MP3 players, but that says nothing about who gets them. Pomona College professor Cecilia Conrad has a favorite illustration from her own childhood that makes the point about the difference between efficiency and fairness in a way so simple, you don't even need a graph to picture it. There's a story from my past involving an old grudge. It shows you how long I can hold on to something. It also shows you my obsession with food. Uh, <laughs> um, my mother makes the best, the absolute best pecan pie. And one Thanksgiving, we were all gathered at my mother's house, and my cousins were visiting from Louisiana, and there are six of them, and it always took me a hard time to get used to that, because I'm an only child. And just the concept that there were that many other people to compete with for anything was hard. But she made this pecan pie, and for complicated reasons, I had to leave dinner before dessert was served, but I was coming back later that night. And the last thing I said to her was to save me a slice of the pecan pie. And so she did. She took a slice and she put it away in the refrigerator. But before I got home, one of my cousins came and went in the refrigerator and ate the pie. Okay? So I you know, draw a circle, imagine this circle of the pie, and imagine various ways in which we might think about this pie and what would be Pareto optimal and compare two Pareto optimal allocations. Well, the allocation that resulted that year, where my cousins ate all the pie and I got zero, was Pareto optimal because there is no way we could have made me better off without making one of them worse off. The allocation where I got the slice of pie would have been Pareto optimal too, because again, there would have been no way of making someone better off without making someone worse off. So both of those 
you know, we can legitimately say are Pareto optimal and efficient. The inefficient outcome would have been if I'd never eaten the slice and she'd thrown it away, right? Because then no one got to use that slice of pie. But it doesn't say anything about the fairness or justice of it. And if you ask me, it was clearly unfair that I didn't get that slice of pie. <laughs> And you can even see these colliding criteria on the good old equilibrium graph. Yes, at equilibrium, where you can't help anyone without hurting someone else, you get the maximum economic surplus. But is that the fairest way to run an economy? What about those poor consumers who are out of the market even at the equilibrium price because they simply can't afford MP3 players at almost any price? The answer of economics is the more that's produced, the more that's available to compensate them. But compensating the losers is a political decision. It doesn't always happen, and it has problems of its own. Now, if you don't feel sorry for those who have to go without MP3s, what about people who can't afford to eat? Switch the example to food, and the losers on the demand curve are the folks who, without redistribution, go hungry. Moreover, you might feel bad for the producers who lose out as well. The higher cost producers in food production tend to be small farmers who can't compete with low cost agribusinesses. The bottom line is that efficiency says nothing about fairness. It simply says that at equilibrium, you can't help anyone without hurting someone else. And that's the way a market gets the greatest economic surplus the most corn MP3 players or pecan pie possible, which it can then hypothetically, but doesn't necessarily share to make everyone better off.